Hello and welcome to this Infinite Runner engine tutorial. I'm Renault and today I'm going to talk to you about the minimal requirements for a sim. So uh, the, the Infinite Runner engine contains a few minimal demos. Uh, they're conveniently located into uh, the Infinite Runner engine folder demos and uh, minimal. So you have the minimal 2D scene and minimal 3D scene. Uh, the others are not so minimal and, and showcase other stuff. But uh, if you have a look at the minimal demo scene, uh, you'll see that it's quite simple. And it contains basically the only stuff you'll need. So you can use that as a reference for what's needed in a scene for it to work. Uh, you can start your scene by you know, uh, duplicating that and, and that way you will have all your stuff or you can also uh, create a new scene, call it uh, you know, test tutorial or, or whatever. And uh, if you go into that scene and import, uh, what did I do? If you import the minimal 2D scene into it, uh, then what you can do is just you know grab all that stuff or the stuff that you need and uh, you know move it into your test tutorial. And when you're, once you're done, you can just remove that scene, don't save the changes, obviously. And uh, there you go, you've got your, your minimal scene and it should work out of the box. Uh, as you can see, it does. So um, let's get into details and see what you actually need in a scene for it to work. So uh, let's start with the things that you will absolutely need. Uh, most of them are stored into a game object called managers. In it, you'll find uh, the game manager, that's a game object you'll need uh, because it handles the time scale, so that's how fast your game is going, but also the score, the live system, and it's responsible for pausing the game. So uh, you don't have to worry about it, it does its work, but you, you need it in the scene. Then you'll need an input manager. Um, it will handle input, whether it's touch, mouse, keyboard, gamepad. Uh, do not remove it unless you've planned to use an external input solution. By the way, if you're considering another input solution, have a look at NiceTouch. Uh, it's a solution I developed and it's available on the Asset Store. And uh, finally, here we have the achievement rules. They're completely optional uh, and, uh, of course, they are really dependent on your game. So uh, this is just an example of it. Uh, you can, you know, remove that if you don't want to use uh, achievements or you can create your own class to implement your own rules. Um, I'm just going to remove, as I go, I'm going to remove the stuff that is not mandatory. So uh, achievement rules, you know, we can we can make without it. Um, moving on, we have uh, the level manager here. So uh, this object handles all your levels uh, rules. So it's really in charge of spawning the player. So you need to fit it a starting position. That's what we have here and an array of playable characters. So uh, that's this thing. So right now I have one playable character in my array, so only one, one item, and it's a 2D jumper. Um, the distance between characters in, is only uh, relevant if you have more than one character, so we just won't consider that. Uh, then you can define the number of points that you gain per second. Uh, if you set that to zero, uh, points we won't be, you know, uh, uh, gain per second but only when you collect coins or whatever uh, it also defines the bounds of the level so you have two kinds of bounds you have the recycle bounds uh, that's the thing that uh, you can see here where, where are my bounds oh yeah right uh, they're really large so uh, that's the yellow the yellow bounds uh, they are 3d objects by the way so uh, uh, it's actually a cube um, and um, the recycle bounds are uh, the bounds after which objects will get recycled if they are uh, the required components. And uh, then you have the death bounds. That's the bounds that if your character goes over that line, it dies instantly. Uh, what else? You can also define the level speed here. And uh, so you have an, an initial speed, a maximum speed, and uh, the speed that should be applied per second. Uh, so right now the speed will go uh, 10, 10.5, 11, 11.5 and so on until it reaches 40 and then it stops uh, accelerating. Um, you can also define intro and outro durations. So that's the, the fade to black and uh, fade in that you have at the, the end and the start of the level. 
and uh, you can have also a start countdown and the start text that's something that you'll see when you uh, so for example i'll, I'll just uh, write something like uh, free and, and get ready and if i press play you'll see that um, if i uh, i'm just gonna <laughs> do that again i had my window outside of my screen so uh, now i have a, a free uh, second scan down and uh, the text that i wanted to so get ready um so yeah that, that covers pretty much uh everything that you need to know about uh the level manager so that's something that you will need to keep uh then you will need a main camera uh usually um you can add you know a controller to it this one is really uh, fixed so it, it doesn't do much uh so it's just you know your regular unity's uh camera and then you'll need uh, a starting point a starting position so uh, here it is uh, my starting position is here and that's something i fed to my level manager you these these are really uh, the only thing you need uh, one thing that you'll find in most uh, scenes however is the ui camera it usually sits outside of your scene but uh, it's a different camera so you really you can move it anywhere as long as uh, you know it's not over uh, you know the, the the other camera because but be a mess so uh, you can put it really anywhere you want and as you can see this one uh, is responsible for a few things so uh, you have your GUI manager component on it and it will store uh, the pull screen it will handle the game of the screen too the the lights that will go here uh, the name of the level the counter uh, point counter the pose button but also the mobile controls so uh, if you at fault uh, the hierarchy here you'll see that it actually contains uh, the left and right uh, buttons, uh, the main action buttons, stuff like that. So uh, usually you'll want to keep it in the scene, but it's not mandatory. So let's let's remove it and see what happens. Um, in this minimal scene, I also have instructions. So uh, instructions are uh, this text here. Instructions go here. Uh, that's uh, something that will display the advice text that you've specified into uh, your level manager. So uh, here. In my level manager i've said that my instructions text is uh, desktop press space and so on so uh, if i press start uh, you know that text changes and it gets displayed for a little while and then it fades and disappears that's something that is non-mandatory so i can just you know remove it if i don't want to use it then i have a parallax background that's it um, it's just you know purely cosmetic so uh, i can also get rid of it and I have a start ground. Um, of course, you can have different uh, ways to start your level and different uh, kind of platforms. But in my case, uh, even if it's not mandatory and I could remove it, um, my character would fall and uh, die instantly. So I'm going to leave it here. And finally, I have a platform spawner here. And that's uh, the thing that will be responsible for spawning uh, my level. So in the Infinite Runner engine, your character stays static in the scene and it's the level that comes at it. The reason behind that choice is that uh, that way you have much more control over the objects you instantiate. By definition, a level uh, in an infinite or endless runner is, well, infinite, so uh, it could get really large really quick. Uh, that way, uh, if I just scroll back, you'll see that every time platforms get over the recycle line they are recycled and here i have a pool of objects um, and i can see here that i have provisions for 19 platforms i'm never going to use 19 at a time so they just get re uh, disabled and enabled as i need them uh, this way it guarantees that uh, the um, uh, performance is optimal and actually if you have a look at uh, the profiler here you'll see that I'm at a thousand uh, theoretical FPS. Uh, I'm really consuming absolutely nothing. Uh, it could go on for ages. You could make the highest score you want. You'd keep your performance at the most optimal uh, level. And that also guarantees that it will run uh, really well on mobile. Um, well, at least depending on, on the size of your textures and so on, but the, the engine will be really low footprint. Um, that covers everything you need to know about 
the minimal scene. Uh, I hope you learned something new today and uh, see you in the next tutorial. Bye.